TED Radio I'm in fantastic hilly woods around me with this TDH3 radio here, so just stay tuned. Let me tell you a few words more about this tiny radio that fits into my shirt's pocket easily. First of all, this is not a sponsored video. The TID radio has sent me a radio only inquiring if I would be interested in making an honest and unbiased review. I said yes because this radio is interesting and it differs from other walkie-talkies. I always do honest and unbiased review and I agreed you know to take a look at this radio. So you see it's ergonomic for the left hand and for the right hand I can easily you know manipulate the PTTs with my other fingers and to regulate the, the, the sound with my thumb the right hand with my left hand I can you know manipulate the PTTs with my thumb and regulate the the sound with my index finger in both hands I feel this radio very comfortable very very you know pleasure to use be it right hand be it left hand like this maybe I can use both hands There are a few interesting features which distinguish the TDH3 radio from other handy radios. It's dual PTT system, it's USB-C charging and USB-C programming with no special cable needed. It's Bluetooth programming with the Bluetooth inbuilt into the radio already. And last but not least, Pocket size, very nicely written, everything is understandable, user manual. If something is unclear, you can go page by page, you know, item by item, and you will find lots of good and useful information about menu, about the programming, CTCSS codes, uh, and so far and so on. So, the dual PTT thing. It's comprised of two buttons, PTT button 1 and PTT button 2. If you push PTT button 1, the VFOA transmits. If you push PTT 2, VFOB transmits. With no need, you know, to swap bands, you know. You can do this, like you push a B button and, and it's swapped. And you can, you know, use only one PTT as in any other, uh, any other traditional radio. So the same USB cable, the standard USB cable, USB-C to USB-A, is used for everything on this radio, both for charging and for programming. If you plug the USB-C part of the cable into this USB-C on the battery on the back of the battery pack and you plug the other end of USB-A wherever you can, you know, get the 5 volts for charging then you use this cable for charging if you go here under this rubber cover you find another USB-C so, and you plug your cable in there and you plug your USB-A part of the cable into your computer you can go programming if you have of course a dedicated TID radio programming software or even if you got a standard very popular chirp programming software which also works no problems uh, with this radio and with this cable no specialized cables anymore no specialized chips which should be included in these uh, cables like FTDI converters, whatever. Uh, all, all the necessary, you know, chips are, are in here, included already within the radio. All you need is a standard cable. 
if you lose this original cable supplied with your radio get another USB-C to USB-A cable suitable for data and uh, charging and you will go no problems I was pleasantly surprised by the quality of display on this radio I'm now in the forest not under the direct you know sunlight but still it's pretty pretty lots of light here and you know I can see everything very nicely in the crisp image of the display what is interesting about this display is the way you regulate the work of this display so basically it's always the backlight is always on you can just you know regulate how long it is it could be continuously all the time forever or it could be in, in segments you know like 5 10 20 30 seconds and there's no uh, a work regime uh, where you can switch the backlight off but you still have you know the display you know displaying things it's uh, not the case uh, with this display so if you go to menu number five uh, you go to edit and you choose let's say five seconds right it says confirm and after five seconds it goes off the radio is still on uh, just the display went off if you push any button again so the display comes uh, comes back if you go to the menu number one which is squelch and you make squelch like zero so squelch is zero the radio thinks you know this there's a signal all the time the display will stay on all the time too independently on the setting you made so menu number five backlight is still five seconds but the display is on and on and on because i put the squelch on zero so there's no squelch that's pretty interesting feature so now a word about purity the purity of signal you know any radio if the manufacturer wants to sell it in any market must be approved by the authorities of the corresponding market so in the united states of america it's fcc in the european union these are european institutions if your radio is approved in your market where you live uh, you may check it very easily taking a look under the battery so the battery slides off very easily on this radio here you have the FCC sign which is approved by FCC and the FCC ID number you can go you know you can google this number and you'll find all the documents and there is a CE sign which stands for Communauté Européen this sign means that the radio is approved by the European institutions so despite the all these FCC and CE signs it's always very useful to check the power level and the level of harmonics especially by yourself so for that let's jump quickly back to my workbench for the power output test we've got a dummy load 100 watts dummy load covering the frequency range up to VHF and UHF uh, we have a analog mechanical power SWR meter and we have the radio and let's start with the two meter band the output setting is on high so we transmit on two meter band and see yeah what a very nice five watts output band in transmission is 70 centimeter band and we see five watts plus maybe approaching six watts wow and we have the radio set for the low power range on both bands i had to go first into the menu on each band and uh, put it on low 70 centimeter band all right it shows two watts output let's push the lower ptt and we have a bit more than two watts on two meter band so my next test is a pain test for many radios 
because this test is devoted to measure the level of harmonics. So I have my tiny SA spectrum analyzer. I have my 40 dB attenuator connected to my radio and I have my radio set for the 5 watts. So it's very important never ever to connect straight the output of your radio with 5 watts or, or even 2 watts of, of output uh, straight to the uh, entry port on your tiny SA because you're gonna I'm gonna kill your tiny SA instantly. We wanna measure the harmonics. We gotta go to measure tab, select harmonic measurement, select the central frequency 145, oh, let's say 0.5 megahertz. Push PTT. We see the tiny SA working. And so the second harmonic drops 50, minus 58 dBs and then it drops less than 60 dBs. That's a good score. Perfect. For measuring the level of harmonics on 70 centimeter band, uh, I've reconnected the output of my radio to the input uh, on tiny SA to high frequency input here. Uh, so because this is just basic tiny SA, not tiny SA ultra. And I've introduced some more internal attenuation in order to eliminate any possible internal spurious emissions, uh, you know, which might be, you know, product of the internal oscillation in the tiny SA. Again, it's going to be on 5 watts output level, four, minus 40 dB attenuation. And uh, so the central fre frequency is going to be 432 megahertz. Let's push PTT. And we see the tiny SA is working. So now we see the results are pretty nice. So we see that the marker number two, which is second harmonic, is minus actually 57.4, almost 58 dBc. So it means it's 58 decibels lower than the fundamental frequency. So this is a very good score for the 70 centimeter band. And uh, we just can congratulate the TDH3 with this score. And uh, so it means that this radio both comply with the, any strictest rules on two meter band spurious emissions. And it also complies uh, with the uh, with the rules um, on uh, 70 centimeter band well formally speaking if if, if it's uh, european union regulation requirements uh, minus 58 is 2 db is not enough to to comply with the <laughs> with the regulation specs but uh, well uh, this is not lab grade measuring installation is just you know hobbyist installation and uh, plus or minus accuracy is plus or minus some 7 dBs probably so but the the, the general picture of the general trend is that you know TDH3 radio is complying with the, with the very strict requirements all right so now a word about programming in the field the TED radio TDH3 is unique in a way that if you wish you can do programming anywhere you are even in the middle of the forest if there is such a need for you you need to use the bluetooth link to enable the bluetooth link on the radio you push and hold a blue menu button for a few seconds probably i see tiny tiny bluetooth sign on display uh, it means the, the Bluetooth is on. Then you go, you know, to your, in my case, I go to my iPhone and I choose the OD Master app. It's recommended that you, that you log in into the program. Otherwise, you can connect to your radio. You can download information from your radio, but it seems that you can't, you know, editing or you can get access to the databases, you know, like repeater list, whatever. It's very useful to go to the general settings of your phone and make sure that the Bluetooth is on. So I'm logged in. Let's go to, let's push a program button. Here you must see the device's name, the TDH3. You must see the radio's name. And here you see, and, and here you see the switch. 
you put the Bluetooth switch on and so yes and then you see that the radio TDH3 is displayed on the apps window and you see that it is connected so then you select you push the select model you select TED radio and you select TDH3 ham so the reason is that actually the TDH3 has got few modifications of, of the radio so one modification for GMRS the other modification for ham radio and the third modification just TDH3 I don't know what it means but uh, you have to choose you know uh, the appropriate name of your radio in this list if you choose GMRS and your radio is TDH3 ham uh, you you won't it won't be connecting you know, so that's different radios basically so you choose tdh3 ham so now it's connected now it's um, it's uh, the radio is chosen you can push a button read and and the radio will download you know the pro the app will download so you see you see on the ra the on the screen the radio is working the, the download is in progress and you saw and voila you see everything what's on your radio what's in your radio basically you see uh, the VFO frequencies you can you can go to function and edit the function function values like you know whatever language light control dtmf anything uh, so that's 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 how it works I, you can go uh, really for program and setting button and do programming and you know uh, and for instance i like the feature uh, on the on the bottom of the app uh, you see you know there are three buttons uh, a repeater uh, a receive transmit list and write so uh, if you push repeater it starts loading and voila I see the list of the local repeaters which are uh, I've put it in the menu in the settings which are hundred miles around me here somewhere <laughs> so and I see all my repeaters which I know which are which are functioning and also some repeaters in Poland and you know which are which are in the same vicinity of 100 miles you may download this list and um, you may you know edit it and and so far and so on and then when you are happy you push uh, a button right uh, so so the radio goes into the Bluetooth mode again programming and now the progress shows that I'm writing you know anything what I've done and what I edited I'm now writing into the radio I can save this configuration in the app on my phone and have it for you know any future so to say as a backup or you know just getting back to to what, what I had uh, that's that's how it works and that is really very convenient I can do this just standing in the middle of the forest in the middle of the nowhere uh, just of course I need to have my internet access through my phone that's it that's done you need just your, your mobile phone and your radio no cables nothing convenient isn't it so what is good this radio also got the airband so you can listen to the airport services to activate the airband you need to go into the menu and activate the airband may make am on i've just you know been driving recently to and from airport and listen what i heard and the tdh3 radius is tiny enough you know just just you know to put it into the drink holder and so now okay i can listen to the airport well, handy radio it's really handy cq 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 this is lima yankee 2 hotel portable london yankee 2 hotel portable calling to meters and listening 
Well, okay, not so many correspondents in the middle of the workday, in the middle of the forest. Well, okay, but if you get, you know, bored and disappointed by the activity of bands on two meters, with this radio, you can go and listen to your favorite FM broadcast station. For that, you just, you know, press, press menu, button number eight, and my favorite BBC broadcast station. It was absolutely huge, and I think Sven who The only thing, uh, you, you only can listen to the broadcast station uh, as long as your main frequencies are on squelch, like, you know, my two meter calling frequency, like 145, 500, is on squelch now and there is no signal on this frequency. Only then I can listen to the broadcast BBC station. Uh, otherwise, if uh, somebody, you know, would call me on, on two meter band on my calling frequency, the BBC broadcast would be suspended immediately and the radio would switch to the two meter band, you know, to the activated frequency. So that's that's okay that's good you can relax and listen to your broadcast station music or news and if suddenly your frequency you know which you monitoring of uh, suddenly activates you are you are you know warned and alarmed and switched to this frequency immediately so that's very good feature this button here lights up very enormously powerful LED torch. Oh yeah, even in the sunshine. Would I be, you know, somewhere in the night in this forest? I could, you know, switch it on and, you know, tell everybody I'm here, like I'm, I need help or something like that. All right, guys, time to sum up. What can I say about this radio? Tide radio or TID radio? TDH3 walkie-talkie radio. It's very convenient, you know, to keep in hand. It's really, you know, sticks to your palm and you want to keep it and you want to operate it. All the characteristics, all the specs are, are pretty nice. It's a very good harmonics level on two meter band. The plastic case is pretty good. Uh, I dropped the radio today, you know, by accident, you know, it, it just slipped from my pocket and it dropped on the concrete floor, like from one meter height and nothing happened. Luckily, I'm very, I'm very glad nothing happened, but it means no cracks, nothing. It's a decent quality for a very good price. With this said, I have nothing more to add. Please leave your comments in the comment section. What is your opinion about this radio? Thanks for watching. This is Linus, Lima Yankee 2 Hotel 73. See you in my next videos. Cheerio.